Typically, the first images that we make of our patients are intraoral and panoramic radiographs. An inherent limitation of these radiographs is their two-dimensional nature. In this video, I'll describe approaches to decipher the buccolingual dimension with a focus on the buccal object rule. At the end of the presentation, you should understand the concept of the buccal object rule and be able to apply it to localize objects in the dentoalveolar region. Radiographs are two-dimensional objects. In this graphic, a cylinder and a sphere both cast circular shadows. In a radiograph, shadows of spatially separated objects are superimposed. So let's consider the practical implications of these limitations. In this periapical radiograph, we see an impacted canine that is apical to the roots of the lateral incisor and the first premolar. The radiograph localizes the impacted canine in the mesiodistal and superior inferior dimensions but does not provide any information in the buccolingual dimension. The information in the buccolingual dimension is essential for planning surgical and orthodontic approaches to management of this impacted canine. So how can we gather three-dimensional information? The first approach is to use an imaging modality that provides three-dimensional information. And the imaging modality of choice in this case would be a CBCT or a cone beam CT exam. A CT scan will not only localize the tooth in the buccolingual dimension, but also provide us essential information on the boundary conditions, that is, the thickness and anatomic curvature of the buccal and lingual cortical plates. Importantly, a CT scan will also provide us this information without any dimensional distortion. A second approach to deciphering the third dimension is to take two radiographs that are at right angles to each other. And in the case presented here, that combination would be a periapical and a cross-sectional maxillary occlusal radiograph. Note that the occlusal radiograph demonstrates the palatal location of the impacted canines, an assessment that could not be made on the periapical radiographs. However, making maxillary cross-sectional occlusal radiographs is not straightforward, and the superimposition of the cranial structures over the region of interest. Thus, the approach of using a combination of a periapical and an occlusal radiograph for localization is best suited for the mandible. And remember that the approach of using two radiographs at right angles is also used in cephalometric imaging. In this clinical situation, we would take a lateral cephalometric radiograph and a posterior anterior cephalometric radiograph and combine the information from both these images to better appreciate the three-dimensional anatomy of the craniofacial structures. A third approach to localize structures within the jaws is called the buccal object rule, also referred to as the tube shift technique or the slob rule, an acronym for same lingual opposite buckle. The premise of this technique is that images of objects that are superimposed can be separated by changing the angle of projection. To demonstrate this principle, consider that you are standing in front of a row of columns. When you view these columns straight on, you only view one column. However, if you were to move to the left or to the right, you would separate out the columns. And note that the columns that are furthest away from you seem to move with you as you move to the left or to the right. The columns that are closest to you seem to move away from you as you move to the left or to the right. Changes in the projection of structures as you change the angle is the basis for this technique. Now let's consider an object that is located buckled to the mandibular first molar. In a standard projection, this object is superimposed over the apex of the mesial root of the mandibular first molar. However, when we take a second radiograph with a mesial angulation, the projection of this image appears to move distally, that is, in the opposite direction of the tube movement. Now let's consider another object that's located lingual to the mandibular first molar. In a standard projection, this object will also be superimposed over the mesial root of the mandibular first molar. When we take a second radiograph with a mesial angulation, the image of this object appears to move mesially, that is, in the same direction of the tube movement. An easy way to remember this principle is to remember the acronym SLOB, same lingual, opposite buckle. Thus, when the object moves in the same direction as the tube movement, the object is located lingual to the reference structure, whereas when the object moves opposite to the tube movement, it is located buckle to the reference structure. Remember that in order to make these assessments of movement, you need to have a reference structure and in this case our reference structure was the apex of the mandibular first molar. These two radiographs show the maxillary premolar and molar region. And since these two radiographs are taken with different angulations, we can apply the tube shift or the buccal object rule to these images. Identify the mesiobuccal, distobuccal and palatal roots and note how the images of these roots 
shifts between the two projections. This is particularly important in endodontic treatment planning where one of the diagnostic assessments is to assess the roots, the morphology and the number of pulp canals. Now let's go back to our original problem of localizing an impacted tooth and apply the tube shift technique. In these two periapical radiographs, we see an impacted second premolar that is superimposed over the mesial root and furcation of the mandibular first molar. Note that with the mesial tube movement, the image of the premolar appears to move distally relative to the mandibular molar roots, indicating that it is positioned buccal to these roots. As a confirmation of this exercise, note that the orthodontic bracket that is affixed on the buccal surface of the root moves distally with a mesial tube movement. Now let's apply this again to another set of radiographs. In this case, we have an impacted supernumerary premolar that is superimposed over the roots of the mandibular second premolar and the mandibular first molar. As the tube is moved mesially, the image of this impacted tooth also appears to move mesially, indicating that it is located lingual relative to the roots of the mandibular second premolar and the mandibular first molar. In the situations described here, the tube movement has been in a mesial or a distal direction and we observe the changes in the images in the mesial and distal dimensions. However, this technique works equally well if you move the tube in a vertical direction and observe the changes in the projection of the image in the vertical dimension. And the technique works equally well for separating out images of anatomic structures such as the mental foramen and the incisor foramen that may be superimposed over the adjacent roots and could mimic periapical disease. And remember that a conventional full mouth radiographic series consists of images of an anatomic region that are taken at different angles. And so assessing the third dimension by using the tube shift technique should be second nature when you're looking at a full mouth radiographic examination.